Jazz started in New Orleans. Jelly Roll Mort declared it in his monumental 1938 oral autobiography for the Library of Congress. Jazz also started in many other places across America. A new wave of the musical sound melded from the turn of the century African-American rivulets of songs in the ragtime and blues style reached middle America by the 1910s with the force of revelation. But in New Orleans, the music was fertilized and nurtured by a vibrant culture of many nationalities and ethnic groups, a melting pot of cultures from across the South. Ragtime was a jubilant, rhythmically propulsive music in syncopated march time. And when forged together with the blues, these gifts from the African-American soul created a new music that rapidly circled the globe and became a primary expression of the modern Af American spirit. The world entered a new age, dancing and singing to the sounds of jazz. By 1918, the emerging new music had been named jazz, a slang term for sex, or jazz, 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 even jazz, by listeners fascinated by the, its manic energy and emotional exuberance. It fused the hot rhythms and lively animation of ragtime with the plangent harmonies and lyrical depth of the blues. A Missouri pioneer an entrepreneur named John Stark heard black pianists playing their own works and decided to use his small music publishing firm pro to proselytize America with their enticing melodic music. In 1899, he published a piece by Scott Joplin. An up-and-coming young ragtime pianist who arrived in Missouri by way of Texas and Arkansas. It was named after a rough and steady Sedalia Bar, the Maple Leaf Club. Joplin's Maple Leaf Rag was a nationwide sensation selling upwards of a million copies of Stark Sheet Music Score. The many sounds of New Orleans had long, fertile traditions preserving all forms of Black music. In Congo Square in the 19th century, generations of African Americans gathered to sing, dance, and drum, maintaining a lifelong to their homeland traditions. Strains of Creole music from the gum from the gumbo of New Orleans, mixed culture, French, Spanish, American Indian, African American, emerged and blended with the more formal ballroom music from the south of the city, Cuban, Caribbean, and Latin American rhythms, such as the habanera and tango. New Orleans, a city of constant organized festivities, teeming with the social clubs, fraternal orders, nonstop partying, required the brash urgency of brass band music. Bands were in demand for lawn parties, parades, holiday celebrations, and funerals, while circuses, traveling minstrel, tent shows, revival meetings, medicine shows, and carnivals all featured bands in which New Orleans musicians apprenticed themselves. Trumpeteers like William Gary Bunk Johnson and Ernest Kid Punch Miller hit the circus band circuit and brought back more new music. Musicians could also find work on the Mississippi River boats, such as in the band pianist Fate Marable, in which many future stars developed their skills. Various founts of new music fed the surging tide of jazz in the teens. In Storyville, the few square blocks set aside for licensed prostitution known locally as the district, piano professors played dance tunes, blues, body songs, creole bandings, and pop music. While brass bands, dance bands, ragtime pianists, and blues singers retailed new and exciting musical forms, they inevitably traded and reconfigured them, absorbing the harmonies and rhythms heard in the dance halls, on the river boats, and in the streets. Music from the larger bands was produced by publishers like John Stark whose red-backed Book of Rags gathered work by Joplin and other classic ragtime writers and arranged them for small orchestras, giving the tunes a wider accessibility. Similarly, blues made a leap forward into the public consciousness of America in 1912, when Betty Seals, Hart Wand, and W.C. Handy became the first composers to publish blues sheet music, or at least to register blues with the Copyright Office. 
many more blues were to follow, often from the pens of New York songwriters. Not all compositions named blues were actually blues in structure or feel. Many such songs of the air were rags, vaudeville tunes, or in Tin Pan Alley pop pieces with blues fashionably attached to the end of the title. The real breakthrough for blues came with Handy's St. Louis Blues, which incorporated traditional folk and blues elements, along with the touch of habanero. In the years following its first publication in 1914, it became one of the most widely recorded compositions of all time and topped the sales list for sheet music and piano roles. And much early jazz derived from musical scores, as from invented or overheard music in the city, musicians distinguished between readers, musicianers, and illiterate improvisers, routiners. One white entrepreneurial agent, hustler, and midwife to jazz was Papa Jack Lane, a sometime drummer who ran a stable of brass bands and dance groups in New Orleans' thriving white jazz community. These White musicians rubbed elbows with the African-American players and quickly adopted their musical styles and traditions, bringing them lyrical strains of Italian and French operas, folk deities, and the sounds of the Mediterranean bands and dance music from old Europe, all transposed into jazz time. 